Hello, welcome to The A-List. I'm your host, Dan Svoboda. And today I have Fred Hubner with me, who is a co-host of the Mike North Morning Show and the Bears pregame on Radio 670 The Score. Thanks for coming. Oh, my pleasure. Me. Nice being here. So, um, how did you get interested in sports? Because I know if you work in a talk radio centered on sports, you kind of have to be interested. How did you get interested in sports? When I was growing up, my dad was a big sports fan. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was just getting into high school, my dad got involved with doing sports on TV here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. He was an executive producer of the Chicago Bulls and oh, the wow. Chicago Cougars uh, WHA hockey team uh, on Channel 44 here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, when everybody else was just getting their feet wet in high school, I was sitting in on uh, meetings where people were you know, talking contracts and uh, doing broadcasts oh, wow. and things like that. My dad was looking for a play-by-play -play announcer for the Bulls, mm -hmm. and he gave me a box of uh, audio cassettes. He said, here, listen to these and pick out the top five or ten guys. So I wow. did, and then he listened to them, and they, they narrowed it down. So it was kind of nice. I had a chance to learn and listen to the people that are in the business already, and I learned kind of like the business side of it, too, because he had to deal with contracts, and sometimes he had to deal with the talent. Mm. He also had a show called The Dick Allen Show with Dick Allen, who played for the White Sox and played mm. with the Phillies and some other guys back in 72, uh, and I would be always be in the control room, so I'd be learning a lot of things like that. But I've been a White Sox fan forever and Bears fan and everything else. I was just going to ask you, Cubs or Sox? I've been Good. a White Sox Good. fan. <laughs> White Sox fan. Great. My first game was uh, 1965. I was eight years old. It was Gary Peters for the White Sox going against Mudcat Grant and the Minnesota mm -hmm. Twins. White Sox got shut out 5 nothing, and oh. I suffered until last yeah. year. <laughs> that must have been a great year for you because I, I, I watched it with my dad. He's a great White Sox fan, and it was amazing. No, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Plus, as doing the radio show, we were able to go down. We actually went to Houston, so we were in mm -hmm. Houston for games three and four of the World Series, that's, and we had a great crazy, time. Yeah. I mean, that 14-inning game with Jeff yeah. Blum hitting the homer. We, uh, myself and uh, one of our producers, mm -hmm. we stayed till the 11th, mm -hmm. took a cab back to the hotel <laughs> for the 12th, Watch the 13th, and then I said, I got to go to bed because we have to get up in two and a half hours to oh, do a show. So, oh. so I, I, caught the, I caught the last inning. Mm -hmm. Even though we were at the game, I caught the last inning in bed because mm -hmm. it, we had to get up at yeah. uh, like 3 o'clock to do the show. Wow. So. so did you have any like sports idols as a child, like any person that you really idolized, any team, any, um, anything like that? Watch, watching the Bears back in the day, people think it's real easy to watch TV now. Mm -hmm. You just flip it on or you go to direct TV yeah. or whatever else. Now, back then, uh, when the Bears played at home, a lot of the games were blacked out, so you mm. couldn't see them. You had to either drive up to Rockford and pick up a feed from somewhere else, mm. or there was a place in Cicero when I grew up that actually had a big antenna, so they were able to pick up the out-of-town stations. And uh, watching Gale Sayers play, um, mm. unbelievable. The best running back I've ever seen. I, I have arguments with people all the time <laughs> about uh, Walter mm -hmm. Payton, Gale Sayers, and uh, I got to meet both of them. And wow. uh, Gale's a great guy. Mm. I've, I've gone up and told him, mm. you know, you know, there's been a battle between a lot of people who the best is, and I'll say, you know, I always considered you were the best, and mm -hmm. he just goes, thank you. That's it, real quiet, <laughs> not soft-spoken, but I've gotten to know him a little bit better. He's a really nice that's, guy, too. That's really cool. Do, would you say that football is your favorite sport out of? Yeah, it pretty much is. Um, I don't know why, because mm -hmm. I didn't play football, mm -hmm. and everything I've learned about football, I learned from watching the game, mm -hmm. and I learned from just picking things up from, you know, play-by-play -play and color mm -hmm. commentators and things like mm -hmm. that. Because I didn't play the game, I don't know some of the intricacies, but mm -hmm. I learned them over the years of yeah. watching the game so many times. Where baseball, I played baseball, mm -hmm. so I know a little bit more of the, th mm -hmm. more of the uh, intricacies and the, not rules, but you know, mm -hmm. the, the fundamentals of the yeah. game. Where in football, I didn't know as much and I learned, and I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, on a, on a yearly basis, I'm learning. Mm -hmm. Plus, they keep coming up with more defenses and everything else, and mm -hmm. it took a while to figure out the cover two for a lot of people and yeah. all the other things. But I'd say football is probably my favorite. Do you have any? You said that Gail Sayers was your idol as a child. Is he? Would he? Would you still say that he's one of your idols, like as an adult right now? He was. He was one of them, and it was nice to get the chance to meet him. Mm -hmm. And being in this business, I had a chance to meet a lot of athletes, and mm -hmm. it was nice that I was. You know, I loved. I loved watching Gail Sayers play, and then when I got to meet him, he was a real nice guy. Mm -hmm. That's probably not the case with everybody because mm -hmm. you, you know the yeah. way athletes are nowadays yeah. with the big money and mm -hmm. everything like that. And Gail was a guy where when he got hurt and blew his knee out, mm -hmm. if he was playing nowadays, I mean, look, Willis McGay, he blew his knee out in the, in the bowl game mm -hmm. and he came back a year later. Yeah, they, Gail could have done that. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. he had they didn't have that science. So. Yeah. Uh, after Gail, uh, Joe Montana became a favorite of mine. I was. Was he a quarterback? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A quarterback mm -hmm. for uh, for he quarterbacked the Notre Dame and then mm -hmm. went to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And when I was growing up, I watched the uh, Notre Dame play on TV, mm -hmm. and just became a big fan of his. And then he got drafted by the 49ers. And my 
My parents got divorced and my dad moved out to the West mm -hmm. Coast and I was able to follow the 49ers through him mm -hmm. and then they just started winning championships. So it was kind of nice. It's pretty interesting. Well, we're going to go to a break right now, but uh, stay tuned and we'll have more from Fred Hubner coming up next. Welcome back to the A-List on Dance Voda. I'm sitting down with Fred Humer today. So I heard you were followed the career of one of our alumni, uh, Maggie McCluskey. Yeah, it's, it's weird. I had a chance to uh, see her play when she was in, high, in grade school mm -hmm. over at Hauser Middle School. I went to see my niece's game, Brittany Rubino, who actually mm -hmm. goes to school here at uh, RB now. And for some weird reason, they decided to play the eighth grade game before the seventh grade game over there. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, okay, well, I got to sit and watch this in order to see Brittany. Well, they played, and it, here's Maggie, and she's throwing, you know, throwing <laughs> passes length of the court and you know, taking long jump shots mm -hmm. and everything. Well, this girl is amazing, and as an eighth grader. So I followed her. I knew she was coming here to school, and I watched her play a couple times as a freshman, and I mentioned it on the radio a couple times, mm -hmm. and then I got a chance to meet her parents, uh, and, you know, we, we became not friends, but acquaintances. Mm -hmm. Every time I'd, I'd see them at a game, we'd sit around and talk about things, and they got a little mad at me because a couple <laughs> years in a row I went to the uh, regional, uh, regional finals, and they lost, and her, her mom would go, why do you keep coming to these games? Like, I'm sorry, you lose these. But it, it, was so, it was so much fun watching her play, and hopefully she does great at Loyola now. Well, it'll be fun. She got a full ride. She was, I think she holds, like, so many records at her school. It's pretty amazing. Well, it was nice, too, because during some of the tournaments, they would have the three-point shootout mm -hmm. competitions. And if you'd get to the uh, regionals or sectionals early enough, you'd be able to see the, the, con the competition. And she was just nailing the three. Yeah. So it was so much fun to watch her play. Mm -hmm. And the one thing they really always needed, in my opinion, was they needed someone to rebound because they always take, were taking a lot of outside mm -hmm. shots. They yeah. didn't have the rebounding. Mm -hmm. And they'd always go up against a team that had, you know, two two girls that were, mm -hmm. had some size on them, mm -hmm. and that was probably the the downfall over the last couple mm -hmm. of years. Well, you are a co-host of the Mike North Morning Show mm -hmm. on Radio Six Seventy. Now, for those of you who don't know, what what exactly does what exactly is that show about? It's about a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we were always doing all sports, and about two years ago, Mike decided that. Well, actually, the station decided they wanted to move Mike to the mornings. Mm -hmm. uh, he was doing the afternoons, and they wanted to move him to the mornings and make the show a little bit more than just sports. So what they did was uh, he, they told him, pick who you want to do, you know, whatever you want to do, and we'll do the show. And he said it'll be politics, it'll be sports. It was coming up on an election a couple mm -hmm. years ago. So he said, we'll talk some politics, we'll do some sports, entertainment, whatever comes up, instead of just strictly sports mm -hmm. you know, for four straight hours. And uh, Ann Maxfield, who used to work at WGN, she came over to do news. And um, I was doing the sports updates for and working with Mike Murphy for five years before that, mm -hmm. working mornings. So I stuck around and I kept working with Mike. So the three of us worked together and it just became pretty much a, a show about sports and then anything else that popped up. And he's big in the music, I love music, and Mike's a big fan of uh, 60s music. Huge Elvis fan, huge Frank Sinatra fan, so we have a lot of arguments about music mm -hmm. and things like that. So we've been doing that for a little bit more than two years now. That's pretty cool. So what would you say, like, how is the life of, like, a radio DJ? Because you're, like, on the air all the time. How is that? Like, it, It's a lot of fun, and people, it's funny because people say, you know, you're getting to do, I always use the line, you know, I have to watch TV. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I'm one of the few people who say, you know, I'm watching the games today. It's my job. Mm -hmm. I have to watch it. I have no choice because if something happens in the game and we're going to talk about mm -hmm. it the next day, I've got to make sure I see it. Um, people can say, you know, you may want to watch, you can watch the highlights on Sports Center or something, but it's always the little play that they may not show that changes a game or something like that. So, so we when, have to watch all of them. When you're watching the game, you're actually doing your work, which oh, is, yeah. we got to be amazing just to say. Constantly yeah. taking <laughs> notes. There's taking notes all the mm -hmm. time. There were times where I was watching the Sox and the Cubs, and I would be mm -hmm. keeping score of both games at the mm -hmm. same time as I'm watching mm -hmm. them. And then as the years go by, if the Sox were falling out and were in the, in the pennant race as much, then I'd watch the Cubs. And obviously last year was the other way around. Mm -hmm. And then this past year in 06, the Cubs fell out and people stopped mm -hmm. watching them. Even diehard Cub fans <laughs> stopped watching them. So I watched the White Sox all the way. Plus, our station just got the White Sox. As this was the first year of a five-year deal with the White Sox broadcast on our station. That's pretty cool. So that was real mm -hmm. nice, too. But uh, basically, you just have to make sure you read everything and mm -hmm. see everything. And, uh, you know, it's working mornings. It's kind of a little bit of a different shift than other people mm -hmm. have. I mean, I get up at like quarter to three every morning, uh, do the show, which starts at uh, six. We have a, a meeting at about 5 o'clock. We talk for about 10 minutes about what the show, basically not a whole lot about what we're going to talk about, just who the guests are mm -hmm. and what's coming up. And then we go our separate ways, get our stuff together, our preparation, and then we meet again at 6 o'clock in the studio and do the show till 10. I come home, usually take a nap in the afternoon because I have to watch the games mm -hmm. at night. Like the World Series is going on, I have to watch the games. Mm -hmm. 
Thank God that he didn't play last, you know, the <laughs> other night because it was, you know, it wouldn't have started till 9:30, and I wouldn't have been able to watch yeah. it, you know. So. So did you go to school to be a DJ, like go to college, or did you were you involved in the radio program at your high school? Well, here's what happened at, at Morton East. They didn't have a radio program. Mm -hmm. They had just gotten VCRs, big, huge, you know, suitcase sized mm -hmm. VCRs, and I was into it because of what my father had done with, uh, you know, TV. So I knew a little bit about it, and um, so I would record the, the basketball games and things like mm -hmm. that. But they didn't have a radio station or a TV station. And when I got out of high school, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I, I knew I really didn't want to take science ever again. <laughs> and uh, so what I ended up doing was I went to broadcasting school. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to run the control boards, uh, how, to, how to do shows, how to produce shows uh, basically on radio, mm -hmm. how to talk up records and things like that. Because you got to remember back in the day, it was, it was all LPs. Mm -hmm. It was all we were using vinyl. Mm -hmm. It wasn't CDs. It wasn't MP3 files or anything else like that. So I learned all that stuff and learned how to run the control board and write commercials. And then I got fortunate to work for a company called Phone Programs that did sports phone, which was something in the 70s and 80s where people would call up and get a 59-second recorded message of sports scores. That's pretty cool. And I just kind of, we also cover games. We'd get interviews and put, you know, cut the interviews up and put them on the 59-second reports. Kind of the precursor to the sports pager. Exactly, exactly. And that, it actually went away because of, you know, the crawl on TV mm -hmm. and cable TV mm -hmm. and sports pagers and everything else. There was no need for it anymore. And, um, but it was a great way to learn and to get a chance to uh, cover sporting events, interview athletes and everything mm -hmm. like that. Kind of like doing radio, but it was just on a 59 mm -hmm. second basis. Well, that's very interesting, but we're gonna have to cut you off there. I'm a little bit sorry, but um, we'll be right back with more from Fred Hubner. Welcome back to the A-List. I'm sitting down with Fred Humor today. So um, you did the Bears pregame show before, mm -hmm. didn't you? What was yeah. that all about? I did it for about five or six years. I did the Bears pregame show, and we didn't have the Bears on our station, but what we did was we gave pretty much a comprehensive look at what was going on with the Bears that week, and then we'd also look around the rest of the uh, NFL. Uh, I did it for four or five years, and this year they decided that there's a guy that's always out there on the beat, mm -hmm. and uh, Lawrence Holmes, who works for our station, and he's out at the Bears camp probably every, every day that the Bears are training. And they figured it made a lot of sense to have him out there because uh, for some reason they had an idea the Bears were going to be better this year after last year making mm -hmm. the playoff run and everything else. So they decided they wanted to have a little bit more uh, inside Bear mm -hmm. stuff, which, which is fine. Mm -hmm. And I, I could have done that, but um, this way I'm actually able to sit home and watch all the games. Yeah, I used to always nice. miss the first quarter of a Bears game because mm -hmm. we would do our show all the way until noon. And then by the time I get home, it was like, you know, 10 to 1, and I'd always miss the first quarter. So now I'm able to sit and relax and enjoy the game and then come bring everything to the station on Monday. Well, I would imagine being a Bears fan, that must have been a really cool experience to get to, like, go to work and talk about, talk about the Bears. And, well, and that's, yeah. that's, the, that's mm -hmm. the best part about the whole thing. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people who say, um, you know, you got – basically my wife says I have, my, I have the dream job, mm -hmm. you know, because if I wasn't working in sports, I'd be talking sports with my buddies anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the friends I grew up and went to high school with, there's six or seven guys, mm -hmm. we still all hang out together. Mm -hmm. I'll say something on the air, they'll call me up mm -hmm. saying, we agree with you, we disagree <laughs> with you. Just like we're all mm -hmm. together, we're going to a restaurant mm -hmm. or something like that. So it's kind of nice, and with the Bears, it's nice because, I'm, you know, any time you see something in the game, you know that if someone else saw it, you know, you're going to bring it to the radio mm -hmm. on Monday, and you'll get people that agree with mm -hmm. you, people that disagree with you. Same thing happened in baseball the other day. Um, mm -hmm. We did our show on Friday last week, or the, the week before the World Series started, and um, they hadn't announced the opening uh, starting rotations for the pitchers. Well, they did later on the, uh, in the day on Friday, and I couldn't believe that they weren't going to have Kenny Rogers pitch in the first game. Well, when I came to work Monday, one of my first things was, I can't believe Jim Leland didn't have his best pitcher go in the first mm -hmm. game. So I had a big argument, and I had people agreeing with me and disagreeing with me. Mike North disagreed with mm -hmm. me, so we, it made for mm -hmm. actually good radio. But the one thing we try to do is not pick sides before we go on the air. Mm -hmm. Some, there are some people out there in radio who will pick sides just so they can be argumentative. Oh, yeah. And we try not to do that. If I'm going to disagree with them, it's, it's going to be real. It's not going to be a, you know, something made up and, and, and fake. So. But it's, it's great to talk about the sports that you watched the night before mm -hmm. and do it in front of the radio microphone. Especially if you're a sports fan. Yeah, it helps <laughs> a lot. So what would you say are the differences between talk radio, like centered in around talking, and then music, which is... You know. Right. Um, it's interesting because some of the people at our station, almost all the people at our station, uh, went to college and wanted to get involved in talk radio, mm. be it the producers, be it uh, whatever. Now, obviously, they like music because, I mean, it's, uh, it's all around. I mean, there's all 
but not many of them have worked in the music business. Uh, Ann Maxfield, who works with us, worked at uh, US 99 doing country mm -hmm. music stuff before, uh, but we're all fans of it. It's interesting now because with, with the birth of satellite radio, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I feel bad for, t for music stations. Right, because now they're running commercial free because no right. one likes to listen to commercials. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, talk radio is going to convert into to satellite? Well, I think I, the advantage that we have talking sports mm -hmm. on the score is that we're localized. We're, mm -hmm. we're local. Um, you can't do that on a, on a satellite station. Right. Um, satellites all around the country. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be doing any kind of sport, sports talk, you're doing national sports mm -hmm. talk. That's the one thing that I think is going to happen is local talk about politics or local talk about just Chicago or sports locally will always work where some of the syndicated programs can go and have been like actually Howard on. Stern and right, Howard Stern, even, mm -hmm. even some of the other uh, sports programs like mm -hmm. ESPN, they can be on the satellite because they're talking national sports. Right. But as long as you're talking local, I think the AM station is still going to work and the talk shows are still going to work. But for the music stations, I feel real bad because I don't see a bright future for over-the-air AM FM music stations because right. Sirius Satellite and iPods and everything else, mm -hmm. people can listen to whatever they want to exactly. listen to. Exactly. So. They don't have to listen to the crazy commercials. Right. Well, and that's the thing, too, because in commercial radio, that's how everybody gets paid. I yeah. mean, people always tell us we run a lot of commercials, mm -hmm. but if you listen to other stations, we run just about as mm -hmm. much as everybody else does. And then it comes down to, well, how much do you charge for the commercials? Why don't you charge more and run fewer spots? And it, it's all a whole thing that obviously somebody hired me figured out this is what we're going to charge for commercials, mm -hmm. this is how many we're going to sell, and we won't go beyond that. Mm -hmm. We're on, on Sirius Satellite or on XM. There are no spots. It's just radio, and it's great. It's mm -hmm. great listening to it. I mean, I've got a Sirius Satellite unit and listen to it all the time. What would you say the difference is between television sportscasting and radio sportscasting? Because I would assume that there's a vast difference between yeah. the two. Well, in my opinion, and I haven't done TV mm -hmm. sports, but I know I've been watching TV sports as long as I mm -hmm. can remember. They, have, they don't have any time. Mm -hmm. And they really can't put in any, much of their personality because they have two and a half or three minutes and they're doing a whole sports report. Mm -hmm. Where on, we've got four hours. So we can come up, if we, if we don't come up with something one hour, we can bring it up the next hour. Or we can, we can dissect the games mm -hmm. or we can analyze the games and analyze topics a little bit more. Where on TV, TV sports, they really can't. They don't have time. Mm -hmm. All they can say is, what happened last night, the highlights from the night before, what's happening that, that evening. Then they show a, a, a kooky, crazy play because they, they've got what they call a kicker at the end of the sportscast mm -hmm. where you know a lot of people, I don't care to see the kicker. Show mm -hmm. me more information. And now they've even stopped showing, the last four or five years, they've stopped giving all the scores. They used mm -hmm. to give all the scores too. Well now, if you want to score, you can always get it. Like you were talking about earlier, on, on a pager, on the internet, you can go watch the crawl on one of the cable networks. So they don't give the scores and all you do is concentrate locally on your you know, Chicago Bulls, Blackhawks, and everything else. And I would think that radio would be much better for like a sports fan to listen to because then you get to dissect the game and everything else. Like and you that. can, and as a fan, you can also call up and you can mm -hmm. you can contribute to it. Mm -hmm. If you disagree with the guy, you can call and you know you can go and talk to mm -hmm. him and things like that. Where on TV, you disagree with someone, it too doesn't matter. Too he's bad gonna be, for you. Exactly. He's <laughs> going to be back. He did the four o'clock sports. Mm -hmm. He'll be back at five and six and ten. Mm -hmm. He's going to be given pretty much the same information, and he you can disagree with him all you want. Where. The other day I said the name of the Cubs' new third base coach, who was their AAA manager. I thought it was Mike Quaid because it was Q-U-A-D-E. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It was Quaddy, but I didn't know that. Well, one of our reporters called and let me know on the air, mm -hmm. and so I made the mistake. I didn't care. I was glad someone called and told yeah. me. But if I was doing TV, that mistake would have stayed all day long because yeah. no one would have been able to call and tell mm -hmm. me. You know, So there's a lot of differences, and I think the, just the way that radio can be more immediate. Something happens. We have it on the station mm -hmm. immediately because we're 24-hour sports. Right. Where if a big story breaks at 10 o'clock, the news, the TV news can't get to it unless you have a new newscast. You can't get to it till four o'clock. Mm -hmm. So everybody who listens to us for those kind of information. Well, we'll be right back with more from Fred Hubner. Welcome back to the A-List. I'm Dan Svoboda. We're sitting down with Fred Hubner from 670 The Score. So where do you think the future of sportscasting is going to be heading in the next few years? It's real interesting. Uh, the, the future of play-by-play -play I'm not sure about. Mm -hmm. 
because I think there's a lot of people right now where they're looking for the voice, they're looking for the young guy. There's no people that stick around for years and years. I mean, growing up, Jack Brickhouse did the Cubs and the White Sox, and Harry Carey did the Cubs for years and years, and I don't think you're going to see that anymore, and that's kind of sad. It's, it's really nice to have a broadcaster and announcer stay with the team for a long, long period of time. Uh, I don't know that there's that many more innovations they can do in radio broadcast play-by-play, uh, or TV because they've pretty much tried everything. Yeah. Uh, some of the interactive things where they can change cameras and things like that for TV. But for radio, um, I think just it's going to continue to be a lot of, of interaction with the fans, being able to have the fans on. There have been times where some people like even have a fan on to come help and co-host and things like that. I think that's a possibility, and the fans get more into it too now with the Internet. I mean, mm-hmm. you have – People even doing their own shows on the internet. Podcasting. Podcasts and everything mm-hmm. else like that. And I mean, I probably listen to as many podcasts on my, on my uh, you know, iPod than, I, than mm-hmm. I do music. It's ridiculous. I'm a big soccer fan. I mm-hmm. listen to soccer podcasts all the time. Mm-hmm. People think I'm nuts. <laughs> I am, but I mean, that's another mm-hmm. story. But it, it's great because you can listen to a two hour show, download it on your computer for nothing mm-hmm. because it's a podcast and, and listen to it. And you're actually broadening your horizons, not just listening to the mm-hmm. music. So I think there'll be a lot more. Uh, things on the internet, a lot more podcasting things. Uh, but like I said earlier, as long as you're talking local sports, mm-hmm. I think it'll always be an outlet on AM and FM radio. Right. Now, you work at the score. Do you still plan to work there in the next few years, or what do you plan to do? What, what well, do you, where's it, your future head? It all, it, it's a good question. Mm-hmm. It all depends because you never know what happens in radio. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the, you know, a different boss comes over, and he wants to make changes. He wants to do different things. Contracts run out, and the, you know, at times they may want to change ways. Uh, Mike North has even said on the air he's got a year and a half left on his contract, and then we'll, he'll wait and see what happens with uh, his negotiations. So um, our show is, is doing real well right now. I'm going to stick with that as long as possible. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's interesting. I just, I, I'll kind of just wait and see how mm-hmm. things go. Uh, there was a time where I was interested in being in management a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, getting involved in being a sports director or a program director or things like that. But I've seen all the problems that they have with the talent, mm-hmm. and, be, and <laughs> it's, it's not a fun job. It's not a real rewarding job. You're always constantly being, uh, you know, bothered with little things, mm-hmm. and you're also also always at, um, you know, you're always worried about what the ratings are going to look like. Mm-hmm. They have ratings four times a year, and they have trends every month. And that's everything's based on that. Is that kind of like sweeps week? Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And it happens, but it happens every month. There's an, mm-hmm. there's another rating period, and a, and a, and when they come out, the corporate people, since we're owned by CBS, mm-hmm. CBS corporate looks at those and digests them and takes them apart and and looks at them and says, you could be doing this here, could be doing better <laughs> there. It's really tough. It's really difficult. Mm-hmm. It's better to be on the talking side mm-hmm. than on the other side. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that as long as I can. Now, to all you, the aspiring DJs, like, would you have any po- pointers or anything, yeah, anything but, like that? Yeah, well, because I did everything the, r- the, mm-hmm. the wrong way, it took me a long time to get my, what do you want to say, my first break. Mm-hmm. It took me a long, long time. Um, a lot of kids, if they go to school and they're interested in, mm-hmm. I mean, shows like this, obviously, uh, high schools that have TV and, or radio stations, a- as much work as you can do, and also learning all aspects of it. Because mm-hmm. when I first started at The Score, I started as a backup producer, cutting up tape and answering phones. And I moved into a, running the board and producing a show and then doing updates mm-hmm. and finally co-hosting. So you never know where your break's going to come. And it's the more things you can do, the more you know, know how to do. And, you know, cl- classes like journalism mm-hmm. and speech and things like that are obviously great mm-hmm. because the more experience you have, the more you can bring to the table, the easier it is for people to slot you into spots. Right. Now, you're saying that schooling, do you, is there any schools that are locally in Chicago that or national for that matter that are really good for broadcasting radio television. Actually, actually there are actually Columbia College downtown mm-hmm. in Illinois or downtown Chicago is actually a pretty mm-hmm. good school. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of a lot of people that are on air TV and radio are teachers down there, mm-hmm. so they have the practical experience and things like that. Also down in Southern Illinois, a lot of people in radio in Chicago went to school at Southern Illinois, and I mean a lot. Um, there are also a couple other schools out east. I want to say Ohio University is a pretty big school, and Dayton also is a big school. And, and even Valparaiso, which isn't that far away, is a pretty good school for radio. So there's a bunch of them here in the Midwest. And for TV, um, if, you're, if you're a guy and you want to get into TV, you have to realize it's, TV right now is always looking to diversify. I mean, they're looking for color diversification mm-hmm. and, and females mm-hmm. out there on TV. So it, it's very, very difficult. There's, yeah. there's a lot of jobs, and a lot of people will tell you to go to the smaller station, get mm-hmm. your experience there. I was fortunate enough that I didn't have to go to Milwaukee mm-hmm. or Iowa or somewhere to get started, but it did take me a lot longer, and I think some of that has to do with me not going to college and also just, you know, uh, 
sometimes you just get lucky. Sometimes you mm -hmm. get lucky and things work out your way. Well, I would really like to thank you for coming in today. It's been oh, fantastic my interviewing you. I'd like to thank you for watching. I've been Dan Sloboda. Uh, see you later.